Okay, now I want to talk about namespacing in JavaScript. Um, first, all, I'll explain the problem that we're going to encounter and what we're trying to solve with namespacing. So here I have an HTML file, and I'm loading two different scripts. The names are very similar, but that's not important. Just know that I'm loading two different scripts. These are scripts that are written by two different people, and I want to use both scripts on my page because they're both doing something very useful for my web page. Now, on my web page, what I want to be able to do is one of these scripts, namespace1, is going to handle a mouse out event on this div. So when I have my mouse on and I move my mouse off of it, I want to change the background color to purple and the text color to white. My other script, namespace2, what it's going to do is when I put my mouse over the div, it's going to change the background color to olive and the text color to a dark, dark gray. So one's got the mouse out, one's got the mouse over, one's turning it purple, one's turning it green. That's the basic functionality that we're, uh, that we're working with here. The scripts are very similar. That's not that important. It's the fact that I am loading two scripts. Both of these scripts are using the global namespace. So I'm using a couple of global variables. Uh, one is my function, one is the div that I'm going to be mousing out of, or mousing over, and then there's the event listener itself that's calling this function when I interact with this element. So if I go to the web page and I take a look at this, I refresh, I get this error down here. Color div has already been declared. So what does that mean? That's in namespace 2. So come back here, take a look. Color div has already been declared. Well, yeah, I declared it over here. So when the first guy wrote this script, these are the variable names that he picked. Over here, this guy used div b instead of div a, but color div, he did use the same name. So we have an issue where we've got naming conflicts happening. These naming conflicts lead to JavaScript errors and mean that some of our script will not work, or sometimes all of our script will not work because of these conflicts. The conflicts are happening simply because two different people who are writing scripts who weren't in communication with one another decided to use the same variable name. That's all it takes. You use the same variable name and you've got this conflict. And then issues happen. Now, if you're using let, you get the error message coming up, so you know what the problem is. If the people were using var, and it's an older browser, then it just silently overwrites your other variable. You're de re declaring it. You can be um, assigning something and then redeclaring the variable and overwriting it. So we want to find a way around this. We want both people to be able to write their scripts so that they don't conflict with one another. That's the problem that namespacing is trying to um, resolve. So let's just take all of this, I'm going to comment it out, take all of this, comment it out, and then we'll slide it down a little bit. Okay, so those are the original scripts. We want to solve this problem and rewrite the same code, the same functionality, in a way that doesn't conflict with somebody else. And it has to be somebody that I'm not in communication with. I can't just say, hey, Tony, what variable names are you using? I have to be able to actually write my code and be fairly confident that it's not going to run into conflicts with somebody else's. So if you remember, the basic syntax for an object, let abc equal, and this is my declaration of an object. Right now it's an empty object, but inside of here we could have a property called a, that could be a number, property b, that's a string. Property C is a boolean. And so on. We can also include properties that are functions. So this function right here has become a method of the object ABC. And if I wanted to run this, what I would write is abc.d. That is going to run this function. So let's say console.log. Okay, so I've saved 
both these. This is the only thing that's going to happen on the page. It's just going to run through this, create this object, and here I'm going to say, hey, run the D method that's inside the object ABC. Refresh. There it is. There's the D being written out by this console log statement. So this is what we're going to do with our scripts. We're going to create a containing object, and we're going to come up with a name that should be unique. I mean, somebody can always use the same name as you, but we're going to try to come up with a name that is fairly unique. So I'm going to come up with my object. I'm going to call it Steve. And then we'll say that other guy is writing his script. And we'll say he chose his name as the container object. Now, it doesn't have to be the, per the developer's name. It can be anything you want. Usually, it's a more descriptive name, a name for the library. So if you're publishing something on GitHub, you'd come up with a name that was unique and that people would understand what the purpose of your script was. So, two objects. Now, we need something called color div. This is going to be a function that we have inside of here. If I were to take this, move it up inside here, I'm going to get rid of those comments to begin with. All right, color div. And instead of putting an equal sign, when you're inside of an object, we use colons. So Steve now has a property called color div, which is this function right here. I'm also going to create a new function called init. And this would be the one that gets everything started. I init, what it's going to do is it's going to find the output div and then attach the event listener. Okay, now there is one issue that we have to address here. I am declaring the variable inside this function. I should put let revar in front of this or cons. I'm finding this output div, putting it into this variable, and I'm saying add an event listener to that div on mouse out, call this function. This is the problem. This is no longer a function that sits on the global namespace. We need to make sure that we are targeting color div. I don't want to search for something that's inside my code and then go outside of my code and conflict with somebody else's script. I want to make sure that I'm targeting this one. So we put a name with my namespace in front of that. Like that. Now, we say init. That will start the process. This is going to call the init function, which will find the div and attach the event listener. And the event listener knows that it's supposed to call the color div that's inside of Steve whenever the mouse head happens. We can do the same thing over here with the other function. So we're taking this function, pasting it here. Comments and space that I have. create some more space. There we go. Okay. So there's the color div function. It needs to have the colon because we're inside of an object. Comma for the next property. We're going to create that function called init. And inside of here, we wanted to say let this and then add the event listener as before, except we want to make sure that we're targeting this one. Now there is one other syntax. We can write the word Tony, or we can also write the word this. And because we're saying Tony.init, this will represent the object that called this function, which was Tony. So Tony color div. You can take this, steve.color div or this.color div. Either way, because Tony is the one that initiated this call, this is going to work. This is going to avoid the conflicts. 
Tony, Steve, different names, different variables. It doesn't matter that inside of here I've declared let target, let div b. This could be div a and div a here. It wouldn't make a difference. We have protected ourselves by creating one thing at the global namespace which is unique between these two strings, as uh, between these two files. As long as these two strings are not the same, we're not going to run into any conflicts. We're always using the namespace here. Steve.init, Steve.colorDiv, Tony.init, Tony.colorDiv. Now we're not going to run into issues. So when I refresh my page, no errors happening. And there we go. The mouse over and the mouse out both are working. And that's how you use namespaces to protect your code and avoid conflicts. Any questions, please leave them in the comments.